camera. Perfect. Okay. All right. Hello, everybody. Hello. <laughs> so, everybody found a wine they like today? Yeah. Okay, bring me one. <laughs> okay. I actually was judging this morning. So, I've been here since 9 a.m., right here, judging, drinking. There was 102 entries this morning for wine and spirits. So, I've been working all day very hard to make sure that the right wine is out there in your hands. <laughs> we had a lot of good wines today. So, before we start, officially, I own a restaurant in Ellenville called Aroma Time Bistro. I know some of you have been there because I see some of you in the crowds who have been there. If you haven't, you should. And we're giving away $50 gift cards that I'm going to draw at the end of this. So I have the signups. Kat is my assistant. She can hand out these things. So at the end of this risotto balsamic presentation, I will give out, I will draw live here uh, some $50 gift cards to give out. So um, make sure that these ones are kept separate. So, all right. So I do a couple different things. I have a couple different passions. Of course, I own a restaurant and with that comes a love for wine. And I have a business, besides a restaurant, I have a business called VIP Winery Vacations, where my wife and I take you to Italy or Spain to our favorite vineyards that we've been doing business with for a decade or more and invite you into these small family-run vineyards on a, what's called a VIP winery vacation. We've been doing that for four years now. So if you're interested in going to Italy, check off that box there. We go to Italy and Spain. Our next trip is sold out. Our next trip is about to get sold out. We run two to three trips a year. 24 people, very small, go to boutique wineries. Um, it's not a Perillo tour at all. It's me taking you to my favorite wineries in that region that I personally know the owners that I do business with. So it is truly a red carpet tour. Um, I'm sorry? We do all the regions. What regions? We do all the regions. So we cover Northern Italy, East, Northern Italy, West, Central Italy, Southern Italy, Sicily, and Sardinia. All those are all different tours. So, really amazing, and I literally, we go to tasting rooms where there are no tasting rooms. Well, our last trip to Spain, we were, in a, we were in the winemaker's home because they don't have a sign out front, but since I do business with them, they welcome us in. There was one winery that gives no tours, no cameras allowed in the winery. They let us come in with 27 people and taste, have a great time. Um, so these are the kind of, there's some wineries that the roads are so small that a tour bus couldn't get up. So you have to take a small coach bus up and that's it. So these are the kind of wineries that we're going to and I'm taking you. Most of the wineries I've already been to. The next trip to Italy that we're selling right now is April 3rd to the 12th, 2020. Nine out of the 12 wineries, nine out of the 14 wineries I've, already, I've, I've actually already been to. I've been there, I've been there, I've broken bread with them. I know the winery. The other wineries, I know them because I've been buying their wine for several years. And they want to have us come and show, show off their winery. So besides the restaurant, I do that. So those are the two, my two main businesses. I have another business where I coach restaurateurs how to market themselves. We won't talk about that today. So besides those two things, in 2014, I was named top five food activists from onegreenplanet.com because I am a strickler for what is on your plate. Because what's happening in America is atrocious. The food they're giving us is atrocious. The stuff they sneak into our food legally is terrible and it's not right. And not many people stand up for them. So every ingredient that comes to my restaurant from the salt to the sugar to the straws, there's some kind of connection ecologically, ethically, something where I say, okay, I'm, I'm not the restaurant owner that goes to Whole Foods, fills up my shopping cart, goes home, then turns around and buys stuff from other companies that I know are bottom of the barrel, dirt cheap, so I can make money. I'm not that restaurant owner. My food is a couple dollars more. I will never serve farm salmon. I made that vow in 1998, never to serve farm salmon. I don't use cheap soy oil. I don't use cheap canola oil. I don't use cheap olive oil. Everything we buy, I understand where it comes from and I understand the ramifications to our body and to the environment. Am I perfect? No. Do I want to be? Yes. 
So every day I look for the next best option. So for example, we cook with sunflower oil, local sunflower oil. I call them on Monday, they press it, they ship it to me on Friday. It's a locally pressed sunflower oil. That's the oil we cook with. It's an amazing oil, outstanding oil. It's one of the best oils I know of to cook with besides coconut or macadamia or avocado oil. So I'm very conscious of everything that goes in the plate. Even our pans that we cook with, this is stainless steel. I don't own aluminum. I don't own Teflon. We spend the extra money to get high quality products across the board. So this is what we're gonna be talking about today and so we're gonna be demoing. So let me jump into my risotto demonstration. Kat is right there, just raise your hands if you need. If you wanna win $50 from my restaurant a gift card, raise your hands and Kat will get you something in your hands right now. Okay, who here likes risotto? Awesome. So, risotto is one of those things that I fell in love with as a young chef many, many, many years ago. So I've been cooking since 1990. I uh, went to school for this. I also did my apprenticeship at the Greenbrier in West Virginia. And many, many years ago, I was told by a mentor of mine, Marcus, when you work, work for the rich. Work for people that have money, work for people that understand quality ingredients. So at a very young age, I set out to cook for places like the Greenbrier, the Broadmoor. Does anybody know um, Gordon Ramsay by chance? I worked for the guy who actually trained him at a Michelin three star in London, uh, Pierre Kaufman, I worked for him. I wanted to work for Gordon in 1997. He only had two stars in 1997. And um, where I was working in London, about three or four cooks had worked for Gordon Ramsay. And I said, oh, I wanna work for Gordon. And they go, he will kill you. I said, okay, I'm fine here just getting abused. So where Gordon Ramsay has his flagship restaurant now on Royal Hospital Road in London was Pierre Kaufman's La Tante Claire. Pierre Kaufman was one of the original Michelin three-star chefs in London uh, from France. Um, there's another famous chef who trained for him as well, called Marco Pierre White. You heard Marco Pierre White? One of my favorite chefs, by the way, Marco Pierre White. So, I just chopped up some onions. So, I have... see here. Ah, we got heat. Okay. So in my years of cooking risotto, I have found out in this first process of the onion and the fat. First of all, let's talk about the rice that goes in. Who here cooks risotto at home? Who here, who here uses arboreal rice? Arboreal rice. That's the stuff the Italians want you to consume while they keep the carnaroli and the villone nano. They do not use arborio rice. They send it to us so they can keep the carnaroli. Carnaroli and villone nano. Carnaroli is the best rice, by the way, for risotto. Hands down, when you do the research, when you see what other chefs say, carnaroli is it. Arborio is probably the least favorite among the expert chefs on risotto. So I learned this a long time ago, carnaroli. So in the beginning process of cooking your onion, I found out that half butter and half oil stirred with the carnaroli brings out the best starches. I didn't bring any oil, I forgot. Got up at 5.15 this morning, had to walk two dogs, had to run, had to get ready, had to be here by eight o'clock, nine o'clock to taste. I forgot my sunflower oil, so I apologize. Who here cooks with olive oil? Stop right away. Stop. I'll explain. So if olive oil were reinvented today, do you mind if I come out here and talk to you and get a little closer? Okay, if olive oil were to be invented today, olive oil is a, olive, olive is a fruit. It's a fruit, it's loaded with polyphenols. 
Polyphenols are very healthy. Who knows who uses flax oil? Flax oil, flax oil. So flax oil is a very therapeutic oil that you keep in the refrigerator. You keep it in a, in a dark bottle. You keep it tight. It's, you buy it in the grocery store in the refrigerator. You take it home, you keep it in the refrigerator. You don't cook with it. You take a tea, tablespoon of it, teaspoon of it, and you drink it because it, it's great. The ligands in it are great for breast cancer. There's a ton of, not, of research. If olive oil were to be invented today, it'd be one of the top five therapeutic things you can put into your body. But it is very delicate. It's such a delicate oil. When you take, when you pick an olive off of a tree and then press it for the first time, and that oil runs out, it's amazing what happens when you ingest that. To put it, what I'm doing right now to put it on heat is detrimental. You destroy it, you kill it, you turn it into a carcinogen. You do not cook olive oil. Never cook olive oil. But some chefs say, oh, you, the pure olive oil. I could sit here and talk to you about an hour to two hours on olive oil. I study the food that I serve. I study the food that I eat because I'm concerned. Do not buy, buy the very best olive oil and season with it. That's what you do with olive oil. Keep it in the refrigerator, keep it dark, keep it tight, keep it sealed, airtight, and you seal with it. So olive oil is an amazing food. Polyphenols, it's a fruit, fresh pressed. When you go to the store to buy extra virgin olive oil, when you go to the supermarket, chances are you're getting ripped off. Over 50, 60% of extra virgin olive oils are not that in the store. If you, if folks, it's you get what you pay for. You simply get what you pay for. Olive oil, caught, olive oil should be $100 a gallon. When you go to the store and buy $19 for three liters, it's hazelnut, it's sesame, it's a nut seed oil. They sit in tankers, they come from Tunisia, they come from Africa, they come from Greece, they come from Spain, they sit in tankers. Bertoli, the largest olive oil producer, largest olive oil packer, packer in the world, does not own an olive tree. They rely upon tankers sitting in the Mediterranean to go and fuel them. They have no idea the tracing. They might say they know the tracing, but you're not there, they don't know. We buy olive oil from a family who picks the grapes, olives, grapes, wine, right? Pick the olives, they press it, they pack it, and they ship it to us. Does it cost more? Yes. Am I concerned? Yes. Do I want you having hazelnut oil flavored with stuff and sesame oil and other kind of nut oils? No. So, okay, back to the risotto. So, carnaroli rice. I'm a ratio guy. I don't like to give recipes. I like to give ratios. Because a ratio is easier to remember than a recipe. Kat, when you get a chance, can you get me some water? Who's hungry, by the way? Okay, so I should keep going? Okay, good. I'll tell you. How so, risotto. Risotto is a three to one ratio. Three parts rice, one part water. Once you know that, you don't need the recipe. Three parts rice, sorry, three parts water, one part rice. I have one quart here. Kat, you're gonna fill this up with three quarts of water for me. I'm going to continue to stir the risotto with the fat and the onion. I'm actually gonna add a little more butter. By the way, I don't like to cook with butter typically. Risotto is one of those things that needs butter. I do make a vegan risotto, by the way, with zero butter. I use pureed butternut squash. So if you're vegan, if you're avoiding the fat, replace, use, use a little bit of sunflower oil in here, high quality sunflower oil, grapeseed oil will work too, avocado oil is the best. I love coconut oil, but then you're kind of like going into the flavor of coconut. But at that end stage, when the risotto gets nice and creamy and like just like oozes on the plate, the butter is what makes that happen, partially what makes that happen, right? So now, instead of butter, you add puree of butternut squash. You can use puree of pumpkin too. I like butternut. Okay, I didn't mean to talk about olive oil today, but I really mean to talk about balsamic vinegar. Who likes balsamic vinegar? 
So balsamic vinegar, you have this red logo here, very pricey, and you have this blue logo. So balsamic vinegar to be, to be deemed true balsamic needs to come from certain regions of Italy, not from Peru, not from the US, but from certain regions in Italy. Italy is so strict about their food that they regulate the foods and they have a consortium that comes and inspects. Two years ago, I was on a balsamic tour at a place called Toshi, been making balsamic vinegars forever, and with the owner of Toshi was the consortium inspection guy, was the inspection guy to go through the tour with me. So they're very serious about the food. And Modena, which is the capital of Italian food, Modena, Viola, that whole region, Parma, they have 45 or so foods that are regulated. Prosciutto di Parma is regulated. You want a Versailles? Yeah, come on up and stir. Absolutely. Okay. You need to put something in or you so we're going to start. Your, we're going to start putting water in here. Okay. You can cook with stock. Stock is fine. So one of the keys to risotto is that you. There you go. You know the deal. One of the keys of risotto is you don't put in all the water right away. You never put in all the water right away. You can use chicken stock. I'm going to talk about it. You use chicken stock, you can mushroom stock, you can use lobster stock, you can use whatever stock you want. I'm doing this vegetarian today, so nobody's excluded in this tasting. Okay? So if you're vegetarian and you do, do dairy, you're okay with this. So when you cook risotto, you never put all the water in in the beginning. This is a labor of love. This is stirring. This is constant. This is where a lot of people mess up risotto. They put the water in, put the lid on, walk away, and they're like, what happened to my risotto? If you want to hack this, and this takes 30, 40 minutes. If you want to hack this, use a pressure cooker. It's not the same, but it hacks it in 10 minutes and you will have risotto, but it's not the same. If you're in a hurry, use a pressure cooker. I've done it before, it's okay. So, let's talk about the balsamic. So this balsamic, this is real balsamic. This is real balsamic in Modena. It has the blue tag on it. You can go to Restaurant Depot and buy this for 20 bucks. 20 bucks. This is real balsamic from Modena. You can go buy this for $150. What's the difference? They both have a certification on. They're both from Modena. They're both regulated by the consortium. There's inspectors in there. What's the difference? There's two differences. I'm going to explain both of these if you want to know about. Who wants to know about balsamic? Want to know about balsamic? This is fascinating stuff. So, and there's this individual stuff in between here that's not balsamic, but kind of wants to be balsamic, but it's still high quality, it's still really good. Okay, so. Let's put a little more balsamic in it. What, what is your name? Gail Johnson. Gail. 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 Let's give it up for Gail. Okay, so if you're a big balsamic producer in Italy and you want to pump out some volume, you go to an industrial producer and you buy red wine vinegar by the tanker load. Red wine vinegar by the tanker load. You get Trebbiano juice, grape juice. Don't, I just bought this because it's local, supposedly. So you buy grape juice. You reduce it down a little bit. You put those together. You stick it into a barrel for 60 days. Not that size barrel, a barrel that's three times the size of this, this ceiling. Huge barrels, massive barrels. You put those, that and that and that together and you put it in, barrels for, in the barrel for 60 days. And you get this for 20 bucks in the store. That's what you get. Is this bad? Not really. It's better than other vinegars you're gonna buy. There's nothing knocking this product. But I'm just explaining to you why one costs 20 bucks and one costs 100 bucks. 
or $450. That one right there. So, this is what most restaurants use for balsamic vinegar. This is standard in the restaurant industry. When a chef says balsamic glaze, they take this, they reduce it by half and add a ton of sugar to it so it sweetens up. So it appears to be this. This sugar reduction balsamic glaze is the word, glaze. Balsamic reduction is the word. Balsamic vinegar, reduced sugar. That's what it is. Now, let's say you wanna take this to the next level and say, well, I wanna take this product, but I don't wanna put it in here, I wanna elevate it up. Then you take small barrels, barriques, larger than that, like this, instead of the size of the room, and you put it in there and you age it for three years. You come up with this. This is much more magical than that. That's 20 bucks, this is 20 bucks. Same ingredients, different aging. 20 bucks, 20 bucks. Same blue logo, blue logo, same blue logo. Three years aged in small barriques. This stuff's really good, by the way. Really good. Now, what if you want to do the traditional method with the red logo, the very traditional method? So, every traditional red label, by law, has to be packed in this exact bottle. There are no exceptions. There's lots of different shapes of bottles out there, like this, like this. If you're getting it with the red certification, it has to be packed in this bottle. In fact, this is 12 years old. It doesn't say 12 years old. Because by law, to get that red logo, it has to be 12 years old. It can't be nine, it can't be 10. It has to be 12. All right, look at our risotto. By, <laughs> by the way, Guido Paltrinari, the owner of this company, this and this was at my restaurant in June doing the same demo in my garden for about 50 people. So Guido tells me, explains to me that to get this bottle, when Guido's done, okay, let's start, I'm sorry, I don't mean to jump ahead. So the ingredients in this, Red wine vinegar, industrial red wine vinegar. You take local grape juice, Lambrusco, Trebbiano, juice it, reduce it, it's called must, M-U-S-T, it's called must. That's what goes in here. For over there, you just take the juice, no vinegar. 100% juice, reduce it, stick it in a barrel, For 12 years, 12 years, the next aging classification is 25. Two types, 12 and 25 years. In Modena, when you get married, one of the traditional gifts is a used barrel for balsamic. It's a family heirloom. You pass it on and pass it on. That's how serious they are about this stuff. So, Guido, takes his own Lambrusco juice, because he has a vineyard and a restaurant and a hotel. Anybody want to go there with me? Who wants to go? Did you sign up? Okay, I'll send you information on that. So, he takes his own juice, reduces it down, and puts it in this, in a barrel, a small barrel, for 12 years and ferments juice instead of juice and vinegar. That's the difference with the red lo logo. 12 years in here, 100 bucks, well worth it. Now Guido, since he's a business person and all the other balsamic producers out there, since they're business people, they understand, I can't wait 12 years, they've created a sort of a category that has no certification, which is called a condiment. This is eight years old. This is six, a six years old, eight years old, something like that. So he's cut it shy of this and put it in here with no certification. This stuff is still amazing, even though it has no logo. He just understands I have to get something back for my money that I put in, and I can't wait 12 years. These are called balsamic condiments. 
They don't say balsamic on them. This says balsamoto, that's his own trademark. And I gotta tell you, I can't afford this stuff on a regular basis for all of my stuff. So what do I do? Do I buy this? It's a great company in California. Three times the price of this, by the way. That takes 100% juice of grapes, ferments it, but it doesn't go to the extremes of these but it's not industrial red wine vinegar in it. So it's just, this is 100% juice in the gallon. This is like 45 bucks a gallon, 50 bucks a gallon. For me, this is a home run. I pay 450 for this, 450. By the way, you cannot cook balsamic risotto with a vinegar-based balsamic. The true balsamic vinegar from Modena, balsamic risotto, for Modena only uses the condiment or the real deal. If you use the vinegar-based stuff, it would be too acidic and you couldn't make balsamic vinegar. Most of us know balsamic vinegar as very acidic. Imagine adding balsamic vinegar to your rice and trying to eat it. It won't work because it's acid. This is grape juice reduced and fermented. Much rounder, much more pleasing to the palate, much more money. So that's the deal with that. Any questions on balsamic? This size, I pay about 45, 50 bucks for that wholesale. Wholesale, so yeah. For me, that's a home run. Because it's a lot much better than this and I couldn't, have, I couldn't use this every day. It's just impossible in a restaurant world. But you at home, a couple drops of that here and there, oh. You put a couple drops in your tomatoes, your mozzarella, oh my gosh, amazing. So we don't touch this stuff. I don't touch this. I do use this. It's good stuff. For a container, three liters of this costs me about 85 bucks. And I gotta pay for shipping. So in bulk, it's much better. $20 retail for this. So I like this, I like this product. I'm sorry? Everything from lamb to chicken. You can use, make your balsamic um, vinaigrette out of that. But for me in the restaurant world, because I'm cost conscious, I use this. Now this is from California. There's zero logo on here and it's not true balsamic. So I can't advertise this as balsamic. This is a balsamic style of, of, of a vinegar. They want it to be balsamic, but they're not in Modena, so they can't call it. A few years ago, I, some vendor said, Marcus, you gotta try my new balsamic. I said, send it, because they knew what I liked. They sent it, it was from Peru. I looked at the ingredients. Red wine vinegar, great must, caramel coloring. And I sent it right back. So anywhere in the world can say they're producing balsamic, but unless it has one of those seals, it's not real balsamic. I'm happy with this, because this for me is a great, a great compromise to not serve something so acidic, something more real, but not as expensive. And I do serve this, this is why I have this. I do serve this still. And I do serve this. This is a special thing. Like if I come to your table with a bottle, this is what I'm coming to your table with. This is wine. This is what I'm coming with. So white balsamic doesn't exist. Turn up a little higher. Yes, I will. So white balsamic doesn't exist. It's not a real thing. It carries no certification. They're using white Trebbiano grapes adding maybe white vinegar, white distilled vinegar, and then fermenting it out in some kind of barrel maybe. So, and a lot of times those white balsamics, like there's a great supermarket in New York and New Jersey that's how's their house balsamic, white balsamic. It's really good. They might be adding sugar to it. Or they're taking that white grape juice and reducing it down. So in this, this right here, in this level here, you can get better balsamics because the more juice they add to the vinegar. So, for example, you can do balsamic with 30% juice, 70% 70% vinegar. You can do 50-50, you can do 70-30. When you get to 70-30, you have a much higher quality, less acid, 
more juice, more like the real deal, like the other deal, I should say, because they're both real, but more like the other deal. So, and I have all those bottles from, from Dina Garris, which has all these different levels of must. And then some people say, oh, we open cook the must slow, so it's different must. But you can add different levels of must to it to get a higher quality of this. So again, by no means am I knocking this style, I'm just educating you what's out there. So again, 20 bucks, versus 20 bucks, kind of the same ingredients, just different. But is it on high? Yes. Okay. All right, so, you can let it, um, just give it a minute, but come to a simmer, and then give it two minutes, and you can stir it again, you don't need to stir it quite. Got you, got you, Shelly. Yep, just let it go nice, and yep. All right, so, I love being the last demo of the day because I really don't need to wait for somebody else to get on stage. I do a lot of, I do a lot of public speaking. I was just in California last week at the food show, the Western Food Expo, and I'm in Florida next week at the Southwest, South, Southern Expo, and I talk to restaurateurs about marketing. My, my one big passion is psychology marketing. I love to teach restaurant owners how we think and how it tricks our brains into buying. It's really cool stuff, psychology marketing. So that's what I do a lot of my speaking on is, is marketing and psychology marketing. And I, of course, I love speaking about food. So um, do we have any questions about any kind of food so far? Is there any foods or any wines while this risotto's cooking you want to talk about? You want to talk about farm salmon at all? Wild caught. I went to Aroma Times almost 30 years ago and had a wonderful lobster with uh, it's not the same angel hair. <laughs> not the same. Not the same. We opened 2000. We opened 2003 in Allenville. <laughs> win a gift card. Sign up, win a gift card, and come down. Do I use saffron? I love saffron. I don't use too much of it. A lot of people don't understand it. Um, but saffron is, 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 I love it. it. Sits in my desk drawer so nobody else has access to it. It sits in my desk drawer. It's, yeah, say, yeah, my, yeah. My wallet and my saffron. Saffron goes in my desk drawer. So saffron is the, the um, inside part of the, what flower is it? What flower? Not marigold. I'll, come, I'll think about it again. Crocus. Crocus. Yes, crocus. Yeah. Question? Oh, you're going to look it up for me. Say it again. You have used fluorinated, chlorinated water in your risotto and stuff like Fluorinated or chlorinated water is terrible, right? We have a water filter. We also have a water ionizer that ionizes water. Um, so, I mean, it's terrible because you're in these municipalities that I've been told by my municipality they can't afford fluoride. So I went to them years ago and said, I'm concerned about the fluoride. And they go, Marcus, we can't afford it. Is what I was told. I asked for test results and never gave them to me. But they said they can't afford it. But we have a filter, pre-filter, ionizer. So, but the quality of water is, is obviously an issue too. So it, it's a drastic issue for beans, cooking beans. So certain cooking things, it's a, it's a, it's, it, it can fool with, with recipes. So. Um, Would you share with us again about water? You said you get water. What water do you use? So if you, so if you wanted to cook, so if you're reading a book, a recipe book or a magazine, and there's a recipe in there that calls for water, if the chef submitted the recipe properly and they test the recipe properly, they would have done it with dist distilled water. Because distilled water is the same across the board everywhere. So, and this has thrown a lot of people off because you're like, I put four quarts of water and those beans aren't cooked. I've been cooking them. So distilled water, they don't say that in the books, but I know a lot of, when I've submitted recipes, they've specifically said to me, do it with distilled water, but when the recipe gets printed, there's no distilled water in the recipe in these magazines or books. So distilled water 
is if you're cooking beans or something, do distilled water. If you're following a recipe. What's rose hip water? Rose hip water? Water infused with the rose hips? I don't know. Infused, I mean, I know rose hips. That's the bud of the rose. It's high in vitamin C. And it grows wild. That's hard to eat. And yeah, rose hip water I'm not familiar with. Oh, look at that. Isn't that nice? Wow. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Okay. More questions. We're almost done, by the way. Can you see? So, let's give another hand to Gail. <laughs> Any other questions before we... We're about, we're about 10 minutes away, by the way. I've been cooking since 1990. It's 1990, I was 19, started cooking. So, always had a love for food. What, so, what prompted my real food adventure was in 1999, at 28 years old, asthma, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, acid reflux so bad the medication wasn't working, prescription deodorant, I was a mess. And my doctor just kept giving me meds. And I said, enough is enough. The day he said, at 28 years old, because I was, I was working at the Broadmoor, the Greenbrier. Like, our after dinner meal was foie gras, boursin cheese, and rack of lamb. It was what was left over from dinner. You eat that at midnight, then you go out with the guys and have a couple beers, which all the chefs do. That takes a toll. And at 28 years old, I was doing that for eight years. That takes its toll on you. So I said, this is, and I couldn't, I couldn't run. I, couldn't, I wasn't active. I said, this is insane. This is ridiculous. So my doctor goes, you need cholesterol medications, Marcus. I said, I'm not taking them. We got into an argument. He agreed to give me 30 days. I don't know how, but he agreed to give me 30 days. I knew what I was gonna do, because I just read Dr. Jensen's Be Well, Be Wise. And then I picked up Gary Knoll's book, Get Healthy Now. And I was like, okay, there's a solution to a diet here. And I was in Colorado at the time. And one of the vendors we were buying from, Chris, who owned Boulder Fruit Exchange, would run the marathon up Pikes Peak. I'm like, how can a human run up that mountain? This is insane. So he said, Marcus, I eat healthy. I eat this, this, and this. I'm like, I don't eat that. I eat foie gras and duck and baguettes and creme brulee. And it's, this is, this is five-star food. But it wasn't five-star living. So I went back a month later to get blood tests from my doctor my cholesterol plummeted 60 points. I threw away my asthma spray. I threw away all my meds. Within 90 days, all my meds were gone. Not once did my doctor ever ask me what I did. He just said, oh wow, that was really good what you did. That worked better than the meds I would have given you. And that's all he ever asked me. So I never looked back. So um, that's what prompted my whole, you are what you eat. And it happens very quickly. You are what you eat happens overnight. I mean, the problem is, if we ate something tomorrow and we woke up with six rows of teeth, we'd stop doing it. But we don't wake up with six rows of teeth. It takes longer than that. But I woke up the other day and I, I went out for dinner the other night and I woke up two nights, two mornings ago and I said to my wife, I said, I have a food hangover. I didn't drink last night, but I have a food hangover. I just felt like crap and I felt terrible. I know exactly what it was. It was the crap food I ate the night before at a restaurant. You, can, you feel things, once you clean your diet up, you feel things like that. And people always say to me like, like, because I have so much energy. I've been up, I've been up since 5.15 this morning. I've run already this morning. I've been working in the kitchen. I came here, I've been on my, they go, Marcus, and I make jokes with them. I'm like, I'm on Adderall and Gatorade. That's just what I do. And most people know I'm joking. But I have a lot of energy because I'm consuming foods that have energy. So, all right. Kat, do you have a spoon? Is there a spoon up there? Chef? A uh, plastic spoon or a tasting spoon. Did I do well? This is great. Namaste. This is great. It was my pleasure. Anytime you need a spoon. Oh, okay. And bowls, and if you can help me serve here in a few minutes. So, one of the traditional ingredients in risotto 
is Reggiano cheese. Parmesan cheese. Do you need me anymore, Chef? I think I'm good. Thank you. Thank you. So, Parmesan cheese is one of the, that wasn't Parmesan cheese, that was salt, by the way. One of the traditional ingredients is Reggiano cheese. Thank you, Gail. The funny thing is, when you go to Italy and they say Parmesan, it's real Parmesan from Reggiano. When you say Parmesan in America, it can be anywhere from Kraft to Grana to Asiago to anything. And the reason why is because of copyrights. We don't honor other countries' copyrights on food, which is why you see Kobe beef that's not Kobe beef. It's why you see a lot of false food in America, because we don't care. The American government doesn't care. But when we send product out to the other countries, oh, you better believe, if it says bourbon, if another country were to say bourbon or something else that's produced in America, we'd be after them ASAP. Because we honor it abroad, but we don't honor theirs here. So Reggiano cheese is one of the most often counterfeited products out there. So, has anybody heard the term of grana? Grana is another type of cheese like Reggiano. So there's a great book out there about fake food and he talks about going to Mario Batali's restaurant and the waiter comes to the table and shaves Parmesan. The guy asks for Parmesan, he shaves Parmesan. He goes, oh, can I see that cheese? And the waiter hustles back into the restaurant, into the kitchen, and then comes back a couple minutes later with a different piece of cheese that says Reggiano on the side. The author of the book knew he was shaving grana at half the price, but calling it Reggiano. So, to be real Parmesan, it needs to say Reggiano, it needs a seal on it. It's a very precise way of making cheese. Now, I've been in a grana factory producer and I've been in a, in a Reggiano producer. And a lot of people argue with me and say, Marcus, Reggiano and Grana are kind of the same thing. In Grana, you have copper vats. In Reggiano, you have copper vats. In Reggiano, they take milk from the night before, they skim it, milk from that morning, fresh from the cows, they mix it, half skimmed, whole milk, put it into the copper vat, fire the copper vat, curdle it, add the enzyme, and start making cheese. Once a day, once. 11 o'clock, those guys are done and they're going home. In Grana, that copper pot, by the consortium rules, they can fire that thing all day long and make batch after batch after batch after batch after batch. So when you look at Grana versus Reggiano, they produce so much less because by law, they're not allowed to produce more, so that's why the part of the reason why the price is higher. So risotto is one of those cool things that when right in the rice world, that it still has a, like al dente crunch, and the outside is soft, and that's been the stirring process that's been going on, and the slow process. Oh. So if you want to know what salt we're using, we use real salt, Redmond Flats, real salt. Who uses Himalayan salt? Himalayan, Himalayan salt? Okay, Himalayan, 55 mines in the Himalayans in Pakistan, 55 companies mining salt. When you say the word Himalayan salt, it's a generic term. It doesn't mean anything, it's just generic. 55 companies in the Himalayans can do whatever they want to that salt. They can bleach it, they can strip it, they can heat it, they can keep it in its natural form, they can do whatever they want to the salt. So the word Himalayan holds zero weight when it comes to the quality of the salt. That's why some Himalayan salt is $30 a kilo and some Himalayan salt is $10 or $5 a kilo. You get what you pay for. So we use salt from the Utah Flats called Redmond Real Salt. 
Redmond Real Salt has one mine, one owner. That's it. If you walk into the mine and you grab the salt off the mine and you chop it up and put it into a container, that's what you get. Nothing added, nothing taken away. Because I'm so passionate about the ingredients we use, and I love to brag about it. If you watch my YouTube channel, I have 82,000 subscribers, 18 million views. Good Morning America got a hold of one of my videos on salt and then invited me on next to David Burke to talk about salt. So I've been on Good Morning America talking about salt. What about sea salt? Great question. Great question. What about sea salt? So, if you think about it, all salt comes from the sea. Everything comes from the sea. Whether it's the Utah Flats, or the Himalayan Mountains, or Brittany, France, or Sicily, Italy, everything comes from the sea. So, when you say the term sea salt, like Himalayan salt, it's a generic term. Sea salt means nothing. Anybody can put sea salt on their label and be technically correct. If you buy sea salt, you want to look for the word unsolared, which means unheated or heated to a lower temperature, um, unrefined. You definitely want salt. So you definitely want salt that if you put in, if you take the salt and put it into water, There's a certain amount of that salt that's never gonna dissolve because it's not salt. There's 2% of other things in there that are not salt that comes with the salt in nature. It's like an apple and the skin, they go together. The salt and these other things go together. You will never ever dissolve 2% of this salt. It won't happen because it's not all salt. But if you strip it and bleach it, it'll all dissolve. Oh, I can smell this. This smells amazing. Oh, yeah. All right. Kat, let's go ahead and get some bowls up here. Any questions? More questions? Reggiano. That was a little butter. That was butter. Ice water. We cube it and throw it in so it's easier. In the restaurant world, that's the easiest thing to do is cube it, keep it in ice water, you take a knob when you need it and throw it in. That's the most butter, by the way. That's the most butter I'll use all week in the restaurant. We don't really use much butter. When we make risotto, we do, but my food typically does not have butter. It gets finished with olive. I like risotto finished with olive oil and the butternut squash I think is amazing. Or just finish it with olive oil is great. What's that? The Himalayan salt that I'm buying, I don't think is the real deal. So Symphony. American Blue Green Symphony is the real deal. Okay. $30 a kilo. They have two or three double blind placebo tests on them. Hail growth, nail growth, blood pressure. It's really good stuff. So what I'm buying, if it's not the real deal, I'm not getting all the micronutrients, correct? The Himalayan, the American Blue Green has 84 ionic minerals. Right, the minerals, right? 84. American Blue Green, it's called Symphony. I don't use it because it's, I have a bag of it around. My wife uses it for the neti pot. What's that? That's one pound in there. I maybe put four ounces to that whole box. Now, since I didn't add chicken stock, this does take a little more salt. Good. Mm. 
So Kat, if you want to do that and hand it to me, then I'll go on the bottom there and serve it. Okay. Any other questions before we start serving? Carnaroli. Carnaroli rice. Skip the arborio. Carnaroli is easier to reveal on non owner works. Carnaroli has, has much more give in, so you don't screw up. So, and it's just, it's better. It's just better all around. But chefs who know it say I have much more lead way when I cook it and I let my risotto sit. It doesn't bind up and, yeah. So, okay, so we had a contest, which I'm going to repost. We had a contest three weeks ago. If you drop a burger on our feed, on our, on our thing, we'll give you a $50 gift card or something. My father unexpectedly passed away. And I had to, I stopped working for two weeks to get things in order. And I meant to go back this week and do that. Next week, I'm going to have somebody in lineup. Hopefully next week, I'll be able to do that. So I'm going to repost it and be able to do that. So we'll give away, if I use five, I'll give away five gift cards. If I use one, I'll do one. There were some really good answers there and I started writing it really back and I lost track halfway through with everything happening. So, but yes. So if you go onto our Aroma Time feed on Facebook, there's a question there. If we use your burger, I think it's a $50 gift card. We'll give you a $50 gift card or something. We do a lot of contests on our Facebook page. So follow our Facebook page, Aroma Time, comma, Farm to Table Bistro. We use 45 farms year round. When a restaurant tells you in January that there's nothing in season, they're lying. There's a ton of stuff, all kinds of storage crops, cheeses, meats, butter, dairy. There's grains. We buy all of our, all of our beans local. We buy spelt flour local. We buy buckwheat. We buy oats local. It's not $20 a bag. It's $69 a bag. So a lot of restaurants will avoid that and say there's nothing local. But there is tons of local stuff out there year round. The Hudson Valley has two farm hubs, Hudson Valley, uh, uh, Hudson Valley Farms, to ta uh, Farms to Table and Hudson Valley Harvest that literally can supply me with tons and, and every restaurant with tons and tons of stuff. So the Farm to Table movement is here and the farms are here. I can get tomatoes year round locally. New York State tomatoes year round, hothouse tomatoes. It's a lot better than a sand grown tomato from Florida or packed in Mexico or Central America with a Packer logo and just shipped out. If you want to read a shocking book, read the book on tomatoes. You probably might not eat a tomato again off season. It's a shocking book. All right. Sure. You have to use a, 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 a risotto, one of the approved risotto rices, arborio, carnaroli, or villona nano. Long grace rhyme won't work. It needs to be that with one of those three Italians, carnaroli being the best. Okay, come on up. Oh, a little less. We're good. We're good. <laughs> she first. She be first. Yes, Gail. <laughs> Thank you work. very much. Yeah. She did all the work. Go for it. Go ahead. Right. Go ahead. 